If you have run any published 5e D&D adventures, you have probably tried running a game in an already established setting. And by that I mean a world that is already created by someone else, whether that's the world of Star Wars, it's Middle Earth from Tolkien, or it's the Forgotten Realms, which is the standard setting for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Now there are a lot of advantages to running a game in an already established world, namely that you don't have to create a world of your own, but it can also be somewhat daunting to have pages and pages and whole internet wikipedias dedicated to a world and you may feel like you need to know everything to probably run a game in that setting. So in this video I want to talk about how we run games in established D&D settings and get as much benefit out of it as possible and as few of the drawbacks as possible. The first thing is you need to remember that you're dipping your toes, you don't need to drown yourself in the law of the world. Because when you're running a game in an established setting, especially if it's a setting that you're not particularly familiar with, you can feel an inclination that you need to know everything before you dive in and that can very quickly become well, overwhelming. So what I always tell myself is that I don't need to jump all the way in. I just need to get acquainted with the world. That means that I'll want to know the sort of the general overview. What is the religion like? How does the multiverse work? What is the continent's name? What's sort of the general feel of the setting? Is it a post-apocalyptic setting? Is it a more general setting such as the Forgotten Realms? It is a sort of spell jamming experience like spell jammer where you have some certain rules for travel and stuff like that. This general knowledge is something that you can acquire by reading on a Wikipedia or something like that for half an hour or an hour or you can watch a few YouTube videos such as the one that we've made for the Forgotten realms and that'll quickly bring you up to speed on roughly what this setting is about. Beyond that you only want to know the details that you actually need so if the characters are starting in Waterdeep which is a city in the Forgotten Realms you obviously want to read up a bit on Waterdeep so you understand what that city is all about or if they're starting in the region of Icewind Dale as another example you want to know a bit about Icewind Dale maybe its history some important NPCs and sort of what the culture is like but you don't need to know the culture of Farway, Thay or Waterdeep if you're in Icewind Dale and vice Versa. Everything else is something that you can basically catch up on as you go or simply make up along the way. And that brings us to the second point, which is that you need to use the established setting and all the information that is there about it as inspiration and not doctrine. Because if you treat everything like it's canonical law that you need to know so if the deities are named this and do this, they need to be named that and do exactly that or if the culture is like this, it needs to be exactly like this, or if there's a historic thing you misremember, then everything goes to crap. Well, if you feel like that, it's going to be a very stressful experience for you running a game in that established setting. Don't feel compelled to portray the setting exactly as it was written. Instead, try and make it your own. Take elements from the setting that you like, discard the elements that you don't like, and insert elements of your own as you see fit. And that's also where I think an established setting becomes hugely helpful, because when you think of it only as inspiration, you can really do a lot of great stuff with it. So let's say that you have a side quest you've downloaded off our patron or on the DMs Guild or somewhere else, and you want to put that side quest in an adventure you're running in an established setting. So normally you'd probably have to come up with an NPC that can give them this hook. Maybe they have to go to a town that you'd have to figure out what's in this town, what's the NPCs like, what locations are there, all that stuff. Instead, you just zoom in on the region map for whatever the characters are, where they are right now. And then you find this town and then you go to the Viggy page for that town and you figure out, okay, they had some run-ins with orcs 50 years ago, or maybe there were some cultists in town a decade ago. So maybe the dungeon you're putting in there has an item that was hidden from the orcs when they invaded the town 50 years ago or maybe it was something the cultists left behind when they were thrown out of town likewise you may not need to come up with names for inns or npcs because they'll be written down maybe just as a single line on a wikipedia page so it'll say that okay there's uh, the swirling dragon which is a tavern in town and there's a half orc npc here and then you can always go in and say okay i think there's swirling dragon is not a tavern but actually an inn and i would like this uh, npc barkeeper to be an half elf instead because that fits with this other thing whatever it's just inspiration take what you want use it to get your own creative flow going and then simply make up the rest as you see fit and that is really the beauty of working with an established setting in my opinion because it's so much easier filling out all of those details if you can 
borrow a bit from here and a bit from there and then insert whatever you think is missing. So if you want that town to have a temple, well, you just put a temple in there or if it has a temple and that's to another deity, well, you swap that out for temple to the deity that you think would fit. And that brings us to the last but probably most important point that we need to remember when we're running a game in an established setting and that is managing expectations. One of the key things you need to do is make sure that the players don't expect you to run it completely by the book because that's where it gets stressful especially if the players have prior knowledge of the setting and doubly so if some or just one of the players have more knowledge of the setting because you'll constantly be trying to live up to their expectations of what the setting should be. So what I advise you to do and what I always do myself is make sure that my players know whatever they know about the setting is what they're told by me. So while this may be the Forgotten Realms, it's J.A. Valer's version of the Forgotten Realms. It's not the Forgotten Realms that they have played with another DM or that they have experienced in a video game or read about in a book. And it may be completely different from the version of the Forgotten Realms that they have experienced before. Vecna may not be an evil arch lich trying to attain godhood in your version of the Forgotten Realms. Maybe he's just a lich who's minding his own business and could even be helpful to the players if they interact with him respectfully. Now, obviously, we all know that it's quite difficult to not let your meta knowledge, what you know about a setting or world or an adventure or whatever, as a player sort of uh, seep into your character so they'll act in a different way. And that's why I always try to encourage my players not to make assumptions about what the world is because those assumptions may be wrong, but they can always ask questions. So let's say that the characters run into a red wizard and we have a player here who's had an encounter with red wizards in another game or who's just played a video game where the red wizards were always evil. It's okay for them to ask, what does my character know about red wizards? It's even okay for them to ask, does my character know that red wizards are evil? Because that gives you an opportunity to say, well, your character doesn't know anything about red wizards or your character has no reason to believe that this red wizard is evil or even to remind them that, well, I know that you know that red wizards are typically evil, but it may not be so in my version of the Forgotten Realms, because the more you can remove the player's assumptions about what the world is, and instead have them rely on you to communicate what the world is, the more smoothly the sessions will go, and the easier and less stressful it will be for you to prepare and to improvise when you're running a game in that established setting. So that's basically my tips for running a successful D&D game in an established setting, and that is dip your toes, don't go in and drown in it, and use it as inspiration, not doctrine, and make sure to manage expectations when you're dealing with your players. If you like this video and you want to see more videos such as this one, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. And if you want more cool 5e content and decide which videos we make and access to a huge archive of encounters, monsters, and all that good stuff, you can check out a link to patreon.com slash in the description down below. Now, beyond that, there's not a whole lot left to say, except thank you so much for watching, and I hope that I'll see you in the next video.